And um, our next speaker, Shahab Helek. I have your presentation somewhere. That's important. Uh, who will tell us something about light. Let, we will see the light after this uh, talk. Yeah, I see it now. Thanks, Morten. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. I, I would like to introduce myself, and um, I would like to start from the very beginning. So when I was uh, two years old, um, I was very obsessed with uh, numbers, and I learned in, from a very early age that uh, numbers are very important on buses, and I was very intrigued. It's going to different places. And uh, later, when I was six, my father saw the potential in me, so he decided to teach me chess. But unfortunately, he did not have any potential playing chess, so he sent me to a, a club of chess so I can learn, and I competed it quite a lot. And later, when I was 13, unfortunately, uh, puberty hit, and chess did not seem so interesting anymore. So I played basketball, and I trained kind of crazy every day. And believe it or not, this body, at the age of 13, I could hit uh, the basketball rim. And uh, quite recently, or if you want, if I look at the mirror and I have to acknowledge the truth, so quite recently, I would say here now, um, I basically uh, run around my kids all, all day long playing laser tag or Nintendo or indoor in-house football. Um, but 40 years from now, everything I just mentioned, uh, learning a new game or doing sports activity or running around my grandkids would be very difficult, if any possible. And even worse, there is uh, maybe a likely scenario I will be sitting on a chair and I will not be able to recollect any of my memories that made me who I am. And this gradual uh, loss of one personality is actually uh, one of the main motives for my research. It's not just work. I actually feel like it's uh, one of the most important things you can do studying aging. So in my lab, which is located in Rostock, um, we work on several topics. One of them are the giant mice. Um, those giant mice called titan or rock mice, um, the titan mice can reach up to 120 grams. It's enormous mouse. And uh, the very good thing about them, uh, like uh, in, in, in dogs, uh, that they are short-lived. So we do a lot of research on them. I also, my lab is also work on uh, flies. And we actually take some different approach to aging. We ask now how to increase lifespan. But when we increase lifespan, what are the potential trade-offs? What do you lose by uh, living longer? We also work on butyrate metabolism. But today I'm going to talk about what Morten said, the light project. And uh, this tool has been pioneered by Andrew uh, Wojtovich in the US and spearheaded by Brendan Berry, who later moved to Metcabeline. So we dragged also Metcabeline into this mix. And uh, my student, my wonderful student, Annika, is also working on that. So what it is all about, this light project that some of you uh, heard uh, during this talk, during this meeting. So, I will state very the obvious, so a lot of our body design is designed to find food, so you know, uh, from behavioral, angry when hungry, or the other way around, and uh, then to find the food and process it, and a lot of our body is dedicated to processing of this food. And on the molecular level, and by no means you need to uh, remember all this biochemistry, but the idea is we have a, a lot of elaborative uh, biochemistry to deal with this food, and uh, break, for instance, here, glucose, uh, to other components, which we can use then to uh, generate energy. And for instance, from this glucose, glycolysis and TCA cycle, which are very famous, um, you basically end up here. And this is what we are focused on uh, talk today, and this is um, the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria. It's very famous, I dare say, everyone learns in biochemistry or came across it. And the idea is very simple. We use uh, some of the uh, metabolites that are generated in the TCA cycle to basically um, generate uh, the proton gradient. So we basically pump protons from one side of the membrane to the other against the gradient. And uh, we use this proton uh, gradient eventually uh, in a way that the protons uh, physically pass through the ATP synthase and this mechanical property basically generates ATP, which we need for to basically do everything. And this is such a conserved element in uh, eukaryotes. Basically, if it's blocked, it needs to work all the time. If you somehow have cyanide poisoning and complex four is being uh, inhibited, you die. If you drown under water and you don't have oxygen to uh, perform the final step here, you die. And I, crazy as I am, I thought, let's target exactly uh, this process and try to replace it. Um, so what is the rationale to target and replace uh, this energy? 
The original uh, idea, I don't, I'm not going to talk now. If someone wants to ask me during discussion what was the original idea, I will be happy to share it. But uh, needless to say that, first of all, a lot of drug interventions or ideas to in intervene, intervene with lifespan actually target this uh, uh, electron transport chain. And also, during aging, for instance, this uh, gradient of protons is known to be uh, decreased. Um, another way to look at it, um, and I'll try not to use a very simplified model, if you look at nutrients like this beautiful cinnamon rose with Nutella uh, plus oxygen, our mitochondria will be able to convert it to energy. Uh, but during this process, there might be a damage accumulation. So it doesn't come with nothing. You have a lot of biochemistry, and there can be a lot of damage or trash that the cells cannot uh, dispose of and can accumulate with aging. So this ATP production comes at the cost of something. And you can uh, make this metaphor that if you have a factory and you generate something, Sometimes you also know you can see it very nicely in big city. You have this uh, uh, cloud of smoke going out. So this is the pollution. So the idea was really how we can uh, target this area and make ATP in a cleaner way. And for this, um, I was already thinking around this uh, energy complex, uh, energy uh, replacement for quite a while when I saw on Twitter the following paper by Andrew's lab. And this is really beautiful. What they have done, they said, well, ATP synthase is very basic. It's very basic. We need it for ATP synthesis. But instead of doing this electron transport chain, what they have done is they took um, an ion pump from uh, fungi and they generated it to go inside the mitochondria. What's really cool about this uh, uh, ion pump, which is called myton, that it is light sensitive. So basically, when light hits the myton, in uh, the presence of a core factor called old transretinal, what this pump knows what to do is basically change the conformation and allow protons to go across the membrane. And what Andrew wrote in this paper, basically, this is an optogenetic tool to control mitochondrial activity. And I thought it was dead wrong. When I look at the paper, I saw something way more beautiful. What I saw is basically that they allow a metazoan, in this case a worm, to, be, to basically harness the energy of light and translate it into a chemical property, basically translating light to activate your mitochondria. So in other words, they allow a metazoan like uh, C. elegans to eat light, which is completely crazy, I think. Um, so. First of all, um, I just want to show some data. So um, first of all, when you express mitochondrial proteins, it's very important because it can be toxic. So this is a lifespan of control and expressing the mitochondria, this ion pump, and you basically see a very similar lifespan. So it's by no means toxic. And then uh, this is from uh, Andrew Lab, and this is uh, two of the remarkable things they've done. They showed if you isolate mitochondria, you usually need to add substrates to measure oxygen and measure uh, ATP uh, production. But here, this uh, isolated mitochondria with mitochondria without any substrate can generate ATP with light. So it generates clean ATP. And uh, what's very really interesting um, is that uh, if you now use substrate and you add, and you, add uh, um, and you just measure the oxygen consumption in mitochondria, you can see that they can do so using less oxygen. So maybe induction of less ROS, uh, reactive oxid oxidative species. And they also actually show that um, Okay, good. I have one minute. Really? It says eight minutes here. Okay, sorry. It's a bit wrong. Uh, so I'll go very fast. Um, so basically, um, what we now ask is how it's going with aging. And we see actually there is an increase of lifespan. And this increase of lifespan, very importantly, is also accompanied by... I have five minutes? Okay, so let me go... Uh, <laughs> This is an example of inventing time machine. I mean, the clock doesn't lie. I'm eight minutes here. So, so time machine. So I'll go back. So I also want to add, very interestingly here, that um, if you use uh, Roten on some very, uh, uh, very uh, strong drugs that inhibit oxygen consumption, usually, as I mentioned, you die. But here, actually, they also showed that if you use these drugs, some of the worms are still alive by taking the energy of light, even if their uh, uh, ability to consume oxygen is inhibited. So we generated now, I, I then what I did is I called Andrew, and I used all the charm possible that I can master, and I said to him, we have to basically do it on aging, because I thought this is, can be the next new field on aging, this energy replacement. So we took two conditions which are completely with dark, so the myton is not active, and then we took light where there is the cofactor here, and no cofactor, so in spite of the light, it's inactive. 
And basically what we showed, I think I already showed you this, so I just repeat it, basically you have a lifespan uh, increase. And in a lot of studies, uh, when you see increase uh, in lifespan, you also need to think, do I also have a, a benefit in health lifespan? Am I still active? Because if you do, for instance, my two UPR, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, you live longer, but what kind of life you have as a worm, uh, they are not very active. But the good thing is our worms are actually also more active, be it in four days or in 10 days when they start to be older, just because they can uh, generate ATP via light. So um, now light optimization, if you look very closely what happened in the dark and the light, you notice in the dark, there's not so much difference between our conditions. But if you use the light, there is an increase of lifespan. But if you superimpose, you get the idea that light can be toxic to worms. Not so much a problem for us, maybe. Um, so that's why we spend a lot of time in the revision now to try to address the light optimization. And basically, we now starting to figure out what light uh, can be, on one hand, not toxic, but increase lifespan. Uh, as a proof of principle, we use also uncouplers like FCCP which basically allow protons to go uh, freely with the gradient. And we show this is, again, indeed dependent on the presence of uh, the mitons. So if you use FCCP, you basically don't have uh, the life increase, suggesting really that the proton gradient is very important, the generation of protein gradient. And uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is um, we try to see also if myton is canonical. Uh, if it's, it's, uh, it's actually working on some of the canonical pathways or it's something totally new. I forgot maybe to mention when Morton stood up that the uh, myton, we only use it in adulthood, so not during development when there is uh, a myton UPR. So here we use uh, active AMPK. This is a well-known uh, method to increase lifespan. And we see that myton and AMPK alone increase lifespan. The control, unfortunately, is not here. But if you put them together, you actually have even more increase of lifespan. So there is a synergistic effect. And we think maybe, indeed, this myton is a new thing. So in summary, um, we, I showed you what I showed you, so if you've paid attention, you should know what I've been talking about. The, the vision, that's a really good trick to avoid summary, uh, and I think um, what we want to really do, what is the vision, is basically to have enough funding to one day delete this worm. Nobody wants worm to live longer in real life. We want eventually mice, that's also not a good example, but human, to live longer, and we hope we get enough funding to speed it up. So maybe by ARDD 2032, we might have people with this, and Morton, instead of giving us cookies, he will have charges for like light suits that will generate us energy. Yeah, and with that, I want to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Chav, um, uh, I, sh I should get more light. Uh, I think, but I you're closer to the light. Yeah. That's... Um, I actually, uh, there's a lot of questions here, but I want to ask a question. So, uh, that's not fair, but I just want to comment in now. Yeah. But I, I so rarely ask questions. So, but um, in, it's not always, I guess, beneficial to have a very high membrane potential. So, yeah. Because then you generate more ROS. You probably have an inhibition of mitophagy, which can be membrane potential dependent. Yeah, that's exactly, that's a very good point. So that's why I mentioned the light optimization. Uh, when we did experiment, when you use too much light, um, it's actually causing shorter lifespan. So it's very important to optimize it. If you use too much expression of myton, too much light, it actually reduces lifespan. So this is a really good point. We try to optimize it, mm -hmm. and when we approach the human, we also need to deal with that. Maybe cyclical or something like that? Have you I think that? it will be chronic, because yeah. it basically needs to energy replacement. The idea is not to generate more ATP, but how to generate it. Yeah, sorry. We have to have one more question. Can no, you put it in bats? bats? But about origin of life. <laughs> Um, so think about what bacteria can actually harvest light. So plants can do it, but think about it. Are there other bacteria out there that are actually able to do that, or is this completely unique? Oh, oh it's a good question. Maybe I forgot to mention it. It is. Bacteria can harness the energy of light. They don't have mitochondria. They use it actually to control pH, or at least it is thought. This particular thing comes from fungi. You can read the bioarchive, and, and people that know me can know that they uh, can approach me anytime and ask me any question. Thank okay. you very much again. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> we have our next uh, speaker.